Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com. Bringing you another time video today, and uh, it's a really cool one. It's one I've been experimenting with. I saw it on a loon video. Um, I think Matt did it. He did a great job on it. He taught it as an October caddis, but we don't get a huge hatch of October caddis here in our area. We do see them, but um, it's definitely not the big ones out west like he tied in his video. Uh, ours are smaller here on the east coast. But um, that's not why I'm tying them. I'm tying them because this thing floats like a cork. Uh, you know, when I saw it, I thought, man, all that elk hair, it's got to float well. So I wanted to try it, and it did. It floats great. Uh, I've been fishing this. I actually was steelhead fishing, dry dropper fishing for steelhead with an egg. And what was working was suspending my egg and getting it right at the height that the fish were laying in the water column. They didn't want the egg on the bottom. They wanted it right in their face. And uh, with this caddis, I could adjust my dropper off of the butt of the caddis here and uh, be directly in line with the caddis. So anytime it twitched or anything, I could see it in the caddis moving around. But um, it held the, the eggs to see egg with like a 3.3 millimeter bead. It held it up great. Didn't really have any problem with, um, you know, with my indicator sinking or anything like that i absolutely love this and i love the inline technique with this putting the uh tippet ring off the butt of the fly so because i fish barbless you can't tie onto the hook if you tie onto the hook it's going to slide right off that unbarbed hook so i put a tippet ring off the butt which was what they did in the loon video and that was the other cool thing i thought so i had to share it once i once i went out and tested it out i had to share it uh Here's a picture of a fish, one of the local streams I caught using this technique. You know, it was working great for me. Uh, just doing really well with this fly, and I like it a lot, so I thought I would share. Even though somebody else already put the video out there, you know, in case you didn't see it, I want my guys to see it too. So here you go, guys. Here it is. We're going to call it the Alkama Bobber because, in essence, this is what it is. It's an indicator for me, an indicator with a hook, and I want it to float like a thingamabobber does. So, uh... Here's the Alchema bobber in the vise and then the material list to tie it. All right, here you see the fly in the vise, you see the our little uh, tippet ring back here for our trailer and uh, let's get into tying it it's a really cool fly and it fishes well so for a hook I'm using a 315 fire hole barbless hook this is a size 12 you could tie it bigger or smaller whichever one you want um, size 12 I kind of like it's, it's a little bit big a little bit too big but it floats well that's why I use it so for thread, I'm just using a 140 denier. This is black in this situation. Um, use whatever color, very little of it shows through. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pack of tippet rings. And you see here what I did was I tied a whole bunch of pieces of, this is six pound monofilament. I just tied about two inch tags onto, uh, onto this tippet ring here. And I'm just going to pop one off. It's easier to tie them onto, on the... Um, swivel than it is off the swivel so leave them on the swivel tie just an improved cinch knot there you can see and um, cut off the tag end so we're going to stick this right up on top i'm going to get this going down the top of the top of the hook here and i'm going to come back towards the bend but i'm going to leave it loose so i can set it right where i want it and how i want it is i want it to lay right on the bend of the hook right like that once I get it where I want it, then we're just going to hold it in place and wrap it down right like that. If it turns around, if it goes sideways, no biggie, it doesn't really matter. So once we get that done, then I'm going to take the tag at the front and I'm just going to pull it back, double it over so it's sure not to come out. Wrap that about halfway back and cut it off. Okay, next thing we're going to do is take a little bit of dubbing. And... Um, for the dubbing here, again, I don't really care. This is to make this thing float, not really an attractor. So I'm just using some brown olive SLF squirrel dub on this one. 
Um, you know, use an orange color if you want an October caddis for this time of year. Um, you know, a black one would work for the granum in the spring. I'm just going to tie a little ball back here right in front of that tippet ring. And then I'm going to put on my first clump of elk hair. So I'm using a patch of elk hair here. This is bull elk. It floats really well. That's why I use it. It's uh, just, it floats great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off a clump of it, not real big, maybe half a pencil width. Uh, you see here, it's not real, real big. I'm going to pinch the ends of it and I'm going to pull out all the fluff at the back. Um, you'll see here, I'm pulling out a, some under fibers and just the, the fluff and some of the shorter ones. Then we're going to put it in our hair stacker. Give a couple of taps on the table. They'll all stack out. The tips are all come out even here. Just going to pinch them tips. Transfer it into my other hand. And what I want to do is I want to set this on the hook and I want them to go just over that tippet ring. Once I get them where I want them, I'm going to pinch with my other finger. I'm going to pull my thread up through my fingers. Let it tight in my finger there. And then I'm going to slide it down the other side. And I'm going to make about two of those. And with the second one, I'm going to pull it tighter. And just cinch it down nice and good. Okay, then we're going to come up in front of all the butt ends here. And we're going to trim off these butts. Now I'm going to take and wrap down the butt sections here. Put a little bit more dubbing on and it takes very little here now. What we're doing is we're just keeping this body going the same color. I want the underbody of this fly all to be that olive color. So I'm going right back up over that elk hair and just keeping my transition going here. You can see how it's all still going green here. So. Come back in with some more elk hair. Use just a little bit more elk on this one. And we're going to do the same thing all over again. Grab a, grab a clump of hair. Pull the fibers out of the ends. If you have a little brush, you can brush those fibers out. You can get it fairly well with your hands though. And then put them back in the hair stacker. And again, this time, we're going to put them on top of the fly. This time I want to go a little bit shorter than the last one. So I want this to have a transition down over it, over it here. So go a little bit shorter. Again, pull it, pinch that thread in your fingers and pull it down. You can do a loop just around the hair if you want. And uh, that'll help keep them on top a little bit better. But we're going to... Get them wrapped in there. I'm going to cut them off again. Cut the butts off. And I want to cut these butts off as close as I can because I don't want that body to get too thick here. So we're going to pinch that in place, keep it there, and wrap down these butt sections nice and tight. And again, we're going to add some more dubbing to keep that underbody going, to transition on that underbody. We're just going to wrap this forward, and I'm going to put one more clump of elk hair on here. And I'm going to go just a hair bigger than the last one. Not much. You don't want to get too much on here. But as you go up, you do want to transition and make it a little bit bigger each time. So just pull all the fluff out again. I don't have my brush laying handy here. I would have brushed it out, but put it back in the hair stacker. And then same thing all over again. Just repeat this step. We're going to do it three times total on this fly. And again, just a hair shorter than the last time. So I get this nice smooth transition. Here, so pinch it on top. Pinch, it, pinch the thread with my fingers. 
get it where I want it, pull the wraps down tighter each time. Oops, and there I pulled it too tight. So I'm just going to keep that tight on there. And uh, I'm going to come back here in a second. And what I'm going to do, since I made this mistake here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my hackle pliers and my thread is hanging down here. I'm going to put my hackle pliers on my thread. And that's going to give it a little bit of weight to hold it in place while I re-thread my bobbin. All right, now that my bobbin's re-threaded, I'm just going to come back right in where I left off there with that thread hanging down and just restart wrapping that and uh, get that tied back tight into place again and not tie so tight this time that I break the thread off. Okay, so again, we're going to trim this off as close as I can there. Now that slid up just a little further than I wanted it to so I'm gonna push that back and now I got to get this uh, tag end here out of the way so what I I like to in my videos I like to leave that kind of stuff in because it shows that everyone makes mistakes and uh, you just fix it as you go it's not that big of a deal you cut your thread you fix it so now I'm gonna make a little bit of a head on here Trim some of these stragglers off. Get that last wrap where I want it. Okay, now, I will also kind of push down on this so it spreads it down over. But what I don't want it to do is go below the body. So I like that where it's at right there. Now that I got a little bit of room left here for a head, I'm going to come in with a piece of hackle. This is just a piece of grizzly. You can use whatever color you want here. This is all about getting a fly that floats. And uh, we're just going to get a piece of hackle that when I wrap it is going to cover the distance from here to here, the hook gap, okay? And uh, I'm just going to tie this on the head. Get it on there where I want. And then I'm going to wrap right up behind the eye. And it sometimes helps just to put a quick half hitch. Oops, got my finger. There we go. Put a quick half hitch that breaks your thread off. So I'm going to have to put one back on here. So, like I said, you make mistakes, you fix it. And the reason I put the half hitch there, or you can do a quick whip finish, either one, a small whip finish, and we'll do that this time. The reason I do it is because when I'm wrapping the hackle, I don't want my thread to fall off the eye of the hook here. So we're just going to take our hackle and we're going to wrap it forward a couple wraps here. And just build up a nice little hackle on the on the head of the fly. And that unwound on me there. I don't like that. So I'm going to come back, rewrap it. There we go. Now, a couple ways you can just peel those fibers back as you wrap forward. Try not to trap. There we go. And then once you get up here close to the eye, we're just going to finish this off. And a lot of times with dry flies, what I like to do is I like to finish my dry flies off with a half hitch rather than a whip finish. And I'll just take a pen, twist it one time around the pen. And this way I can push all the fibers back into place, make a much cleaner head and have a nice, nice finish knot here. And I do about five times of those. About five of those half hitches is about equivalent to a one good whip finish. And then we just cut our tag end of our hackle off. And there you go. You have a nice looking little fly. You got your trailer hook that you can tie. You can tie your uh, dropper onto on the back here. And uh, it floats great. Fill this part right here. Fill this elk hair up with floating. And uh, it's a great floating fly. Alright guys, hope you loved that video. Um, like I said, I'm doing real well with it. I think you should give it a try. Take the uh, elk hair, load it up with floatant, and it'll work great for you. Um, 
I've had a lot of success with it, not really getting a lot of hits on it. It's a little bigger, and that's not what's important. For me, what's important is getting something to float to use as my indicator to work my depth out for where I need my fish to be. Um, and this is allowing me to get my depth right. I mean, it's allowing me to float well, which is all that I really care about. And the, the reason I like this over something like a thingamabobber or a New Zealand indicator or something like that that caddis, even though it's a little bit oversized, it's still very natural looking. When you cast it out there, it's going to land naturally on the water. It's not going to make that slap of a thingamabobber. Um, you know, it's not big and wide and bulky like a New Zealand indicator, for instance. Um, it's just natural looking elk, elk hair caddis floating down the river. You know, they're going to see that all the time. It's not going to spook the fish as easily as something else. Um, hey, everybody has their taste what they like you might like the thingamabobber that's great if it works for you that's great and i encourage you to use it for me i'm a dry dropper guy i like having my dry fly on there because even when i fished uh like a new zealand style indicator i would have the fish hitting that and i didn't have a hook in it so that kind of took some of the fun out of it for me that i could be catching one on a dry fly but i didn't have a hook there so this technique just works for me. I actually fish it probably more than I should. I a lot of times start out fishing that technique and uh, go into your own, go into tight lining I should say and um, I kind of rely on it a little bit more than I should. I, I need to be a little bit more versatile and get get away from it and get back to some other styles but it works so well that's why I do it. So anyways guys if you need any of the materials like always uh, hit us up at our shop at wholesingersflyshop.com. We have all the materials for this fly and, of course, any other fly you need to tie pretty much. And um, if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com. That goes directly to me and I can answer your questions. Or, you know, if you want to place a fly order with me, if you're looking to get some flies, you don't have time to tie them, wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com and uh, we'll work out an order for you. So. Thanks for watching, and until next week, guys, I'm Sean Holsinger.